Now broadcasting from his hidden bunker and fully stocked bar, it is the Saturday Report with Hope Sebastian Taylor. Thank you and welcome, my friends, to the Saturday Report with me, Colt Sebastian Taylor, adventurer, entrepreneur, and amateur Supreme Court justice. And welcome to AWSM Radio, independent digital-only radio station that plays today's best music, old-school classics, along with a rotating cast of all-star DJs. AWSM Radio focuses on mainstream artists, independent artists, along with a variety of of interesting talk and music shows throughout the day, such as my own. All we do here is entertain, inspire, and inform. And my friends, I want to engage with you. I want you to be part of the conversation. So find me on the Twitter, on the Instagram, on the Cameo, and uh, even on uh, Anchor.fm at Colt S. Taylor, especially if you want to subscribe to the podcast version of the show, Anchor.fm slash Colt S. Taylor is where to be. And of course, of course, bookmark Colt Sebastian Taylor.com. All right, folks, let's get started with this week's Saturday report. First up this week, uh, you probably did hear it. It was kind of big news, but the Senate of the United States confirmed uh, Katasia Brown Jackson to be the first black woman Supreme Court justice. On a vote of 53 to 47 on Thursday, confirming her for the spot. Uh, she was voted in by all 48 Democratic senators, two independent senators, as well as, well as surprisingly, three Republican senators, Mitt Romney, uh, Lisa Murkowski, and Susan Collins. Uh, she is, uh, as I said, the first black woman to be on the Supreme Court, so it was a very historical moment. The session was presided over by the first uh, black and Asian American person, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, who is the president of the Senate, which you you should know, my social study friends. Uh, the vice president, uh, is probably her, one of their official duties is being the quote-unquote president of the Senate, uh, which means they, you know, recognize people, hit the gavel. They're not allowed to vote. They're not allowed to vote or there's a tie. They're also not allowed to speak in there, so most of the time, they're not there. But during important things, they are there. So, uh, she becomes the, let's see here, there's an official number. There's been over a hundred, uh, a hundred justices. Uh, so, uh, oh, there are. There's been 115 justices before them, before her. 108 were white men, two were black men, and four were white women, and one was a Latina woman. So she is the first. So big, big, big deal. She is a very qualified person. Uh, is a Harvard graduate. Has done all up and down the judiciary system. So she is also very, very, very experienced. So I think personally a fine addition to the Supreme Court. Uh, they were uh, hoping to get this done pretty quickly because uh, next year, if the Senate becomes a Republican majority Senate, it's widely believed that they will not approve anyone for two years until the next election uh, because that is how they roll, apparently now. Apparently that's the rule that they made up, I guess. Meh. Anyways, uh, one note of interest that I found is that uh, I watched the vote on Thursday, a very historical moment, but it was delayed for 15 minutes. Uh, the Senate is made up of 100 people. 99 people voted, and then they had to wait for 20 minutes for Rand Paul, senator from Kentucky with poodle hair, to come in. Uh, he had started the voting there, then left the room, and made everyone wait 15 minutes before he rolled on in and voted no, which changed nothing. Yeah, what, 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 he, he is an interesting person. He actually, fun fact about him, uh, he was beaten up by his neighbor, broke a rib, punctured a lung several years back. Um, you know, I don't, uh, I, no one should ever attack a senator. Uh, but I can see how being a neighbor of Rand Paul might make you temporarily insane. That guy's just a big old jerk. But anyways, despite his 15-minute grandstanding delay, uh, she is now the uh, next Associate Supreme Court Justice 
Uh, Stephen Breyer, who is, I believe, 83-ish, is retiring. And um, she is now going to take over when he officially retires, which I don't know exactly is when, but will be soon. The Supreme Court justice, the Supreme Court makeup is still 6 to 3 lean towards conservative, uh, conservative bent on things. Uh, as you may know, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away in October 2020, uh, uh, less than a month before the election, and then despite the Republicans not letting uh, Barack Obama appoint someone eight months before an election, they thought, hey, we should get this done as soon as possible. They put in Amy Cobert Barrett, so, again... I, I've got some thoughts on that, but I'm not going to get up in my soapbox and say how ridiculously of a double standard that is, but it is what it is. We now go to California, where someone else's rudeness benefits someone else. Uh, LaCorda Edwards was playing the lotto in Southern California in a supermarket. She put in 40 bucks into a machine that, uh, vent, a vending machine that put out scratcher tickets. Um, back in a Vons in Tarzana, which I don't know what that is, but that's, that's a place, uh, in November, and as she was about to pick a game, someone bumped into her, and she hit a $30 ticket, which she did not want to get. Person just bumped into him, bump, bumped into her, and they, off they went, and she was like, ah, oh, what a jerk, I just bought a $30 ticket I didn't want to buy, that's like 75% of my money. Ugh. So, she spent the rest of her $10 on lottery tickets, went out to her car, and then she uh, did her, you know, cheap tickets, like, all right, I got this $30 ticket, let me see what's there. And she won $10 million. Yes, $10 million. Uh, according to um, Ms. Edwards here, she says, uh, quote, I didn't really believe it at first. But I got on the 405 freeway and kept looking down at the ticket, and I almost crashed my car. I pulled over, looked at it again, and again, scanned it with my California Lotto Mo app. I'm just thinking, this can't be right. But it is, and she won $10 million, probably like four to six after taxes. Uh, so she is going to buy a house and start a nonprofit organization. That is the way to go. I think if I did won $10 million... Uh, I would definitely, I would still do this. I would, do, I, I probably would do more of these. I'd just do these, you know, a few of these a week. I'd be great. I'm sure the folks at AWSM Radio would enjoy it. So, yes, AWSM Radio, if you have $10 million just lying around, give it to me, and I'll provide you with, with, with daily, daily content. Yes. Well, five days, five days a week content. I think that's a steal. But anyways, uh, like I said, she uh, she won. The store that sold her the ticket will also get $50,000 bonus for selling the winning ticket. That's usually how lotteries go. The place that sells the winning ticket usually gets a little cut of it as well. Uh, hopefully they kick that back to some of their employees. But uh, congratulations, Ms. Edwards, out there in California. Hope your non-profit organization helps a lot of people. Moving to Washington, D.C., you may have heard this week there was a fox on the loose. No, not Fox News and not a handsome uh, wooer of men or women. An actual fox was running around the Capitol and bit like eight people. Well, they captured the fox, and guess what? It's got rabies. Yes, uh, you would think that the fox would pick up some sort of uh, infection from a political congressman, but nope, nope, he's got, he's got the rabies. Uh, fun fact, uh, foxes are a uh, rabies, uh, carrier. Um, they, uh, rabies is very prevalent in all, in many foxes. It's, it's like, more often than not, they got the rabies. It's kind of w runs wild through them. But anyways, uh, they captured the fox, uh, euthanized it, checked it for rabies. It's got the rabies, and now... The uh, medical folks there in D.C. are going around finding everyone who had contact with it, who might have been nipped by it, and getting them on a rabies regimen. Uh, one of them is uh, Ami Barra, a re representative from California who is actually a medical doctor, and he is starting a rabies prof prophylax. Uh, it is not fun. Um, it is seven, it is a round of seven shots, and requires three rounds of follow-up shots, 
in two weeks. So it's basically like, you know, 14 to 21 shots of this stuff that will knock down rabies. Rabies is almost 100% fatal if left untreated. Um, you, uh, they don't see too many, too many rabies deaths nowadays. I think there's only one or two a year, or even reported a year. Um, they're very effective treatments if caught early. Um, it's, uh, there's some very old video, film from the 20s and 30s of folks having rabies, and it is, it is not, it's a pretty terrible disease. Uh, you know, they, you develop an aversion of water, like, you, uh, 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 you're afraid of water. You refuse to drink water, and then you're so thirsty, you foam at the mouth, and that's why that's the kind of the trope of rabies foaming at the mouth. Uh, very few people survive rabies after it sort of progresses to a certain, certain level. Like, it has to be treated within two weeks or not good, not good. Uh, I think only two or three people have ever survived uh, late stage rabies, and basically, as I understand it, they put you in a coma for a month and just load you up full of drugs to to take care of the the virus and whatnot. So it's 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 very not very successful, but there is like last ditch treatments available. But uh, yeah, so folks, if you have dogs, pets at home, get them a rabies vaccine. And then if you find yourself bit by a wild animal, go, you know, go to the doctor immediately. Um, depending on what animal it is, they might put you, they might put you on it just to be safe. Just to be safe. Speaking of foaming at the mouth, you're probably foaming at the mouth for some great music this weekend. Well, my friends, I, Colt Sebastian Taylor, have a recommendation for you. It's my friend DC. There are three shows here. On a uh, AWSM radio from DC. Friday nights, it's DC live in effect at 9 p.m., mixing it up on Fridays. You don't want to miss it as he kicks it and smashes it on the ones and twos just playing you the beach from South Florida. Then on Saturday, it's DC house party Saturdays. Uh, DC brings his freestyle DJ to the max. House Party Saturday gives you the Miami vibe without actually having to live in the state run by Governor Santos. From the top clubs to the bars, DC will bring the party to you Saturdays at 10 p.m. And then once again, Sundays at 10 p.m., it's another round of DC live in effect. So, uh, Fridays at 9, Saturdays at 10, Sundays at 10, DC live in effect, DC House Party Saturdays, DC Live in effect again, right here, my friends, on AWSM Radio. Moving on, friends, the economy. The economy. I I have folks in Facebook memes telling me the economy is in shambles, that things are terrible. I, uh, I saw a speech by someone from Michigan last week saying that jobless claims are a 40-year high. And prices are entirely too high. Everything's terrible. Well, the uh, unemployment report came out this week. And according to the Labor Department, applications for the week ending on April 2nd dropped to 166,000. So 166,000 people applied for unemployment. Um, uh, from the revised 171,000 last week, beating the 200,000 forecast by experts. The lowest level for jobless claims since November 30th, 1968. Yes, that is how long, how long ago it's been since there's been that few uh, jobless claims. That few jobless claims. Uh, the labor, the labor market is tight. It's tight. So, um, so, so, um, the Americans who are consecutively receiving unemployment aid is at 1.54 million, uh, for last week, up about 17,000. That previous number, that's new jobless claims, so that's, that's new people seeking unemployment aid. Uh, one year ago, there were 4 million Americans unemployed. Now it's down, down to 1.54. So, 
So the labor market is tight. So that's why people are getting paid more. Also, people are not going to want to flip burger burgers for seven bucks an hour when they get a job everywhere else. That's why there's staffing shortages. Staffing shortages, my friends. Um, so also, also, uh, also the um, uh, reports to say that the uh, economy has expanded at 5.7% in 2021. Not unsurprising since the last two years have been eh, a little a little rough with the, with the you know, uh, pandemic and whatnot. And can, now things are taking off. So, yes, my friends, jobless rates are low. Jobs are in demand. That's the way things are going. Things are going okay. The employment rate is now 3.7%. The lowest level since February 2020, a month before the pandemic. Okay? So you're probably saying, hey, things are so great. Why are prices high? That's a good question. Why are prices high? Friends, prices are high around the world. Gas prices are high around the world. I don't think people going around putting stickers of Joe Biden that says, I did that next to gas things. I mean, I'm not convinced. I'm all for putting stickers elsewhere, but, uh, you know, gas prices and prices for things are high around the world. The economies are roaring back. There are shortages. That is just the way it works. I don't think Joe Biden controls the gas prices in Germany or the United Kingdom or South America. I mean, he's either a mastermind of gas prices controlling the world economy or he's falling asleep all the time. He can't be both, okay? So pick your lane, you tinfoil-wearing conspiracy theorists, okay? Prices are high. You know what's high? Record profits. Again, my friends, I can't help but to think that perhaps uh, businesses are blaming inflation, blaming other things, for raising their prices while collecting a nice tidy sum themselves. Seems awfully convenient. Just saying. But anyways, friends, lowest new unemployment claim since 1968. Lowest uh, unemployment rate since before the pandemic. The economy's booming. So, pop on that train. Moving along, friends, to science solar panels. They're more and more all over the place. I'm interested in them. I just don't have the... Uh, I guess the finances to get one yet. I haven't gotten that $10 million from AWSF Radio yet, but one of these days. But anyways, uh, engineers have figured out how to have solar panels generate energy at night, which historically does not include the sun. Uh, so as you know, solar panels, they uh, take the energy from the sun, make it into electricity. Now, taking the energy from the sun through sunlight... Uh, it, it, it like, generates energy, and these solar panels, uh, heat up. They're, they're warm. That's, that's the process of them, uh, of, of them working is them being warm. Well, the thought being that overnight, when the surrounding area is cooler, heat will radiate off of these solar panels, and there is an opportunity to turn that heat into electricity. So, um... Uh, Sha Shahu Fan from the Stanford University of Ca in California and his colleagues modified an off-the-shelf solar cell by adding a thermoelectric generator uh, to it, a device that produces current from temperature differences. So, um, you know, the greater the temperature difference, the more heat that is radiated off, therefore more electricity that is uh, produced. So, with that said, with that said, we're not talking about masses of amounts of energy. The amount of energy that can be produced from the heat coming off of it right now is just 0.04% of the power output of a regular solar power cell during the daytime. So not 1% of it, not one tenth of a percent, four one hundredth of a percent of power. Uh, about 50 milliwatts. Not megawatts, not kilowatts, milliwatts. However, however, 50 milliwatts per square meter would power low power dev devices, such as a phone charger or a low wattage LED light. So 
there are a lot of applications for this. Uh, you know, a little bit of power to power LED lights overnight. They would be helpful in many situations, in many places. Just a little, a little, a little light. Um, you know, you know that would enable a light to be uh, shown overnight without having a battery pack or storage to it or to connect to anything else. It can just get power off of a solar power panel that is cooling overnight. Overnight. So, um, I think it is a really, really interesting concept. Um, you could generate a lot of, I mean, not as much power as you would a regular solar panel, pan, panel but you could put that power to use. Put that power to use. So, interesting experiment. I'm sure they'll be tweaking with it a whole bit more. Um, and this could be a commercial feature to solar panels um, within a decade. So, we'll see. Moving along, friends. Night vision. Night vision. You know what? Night vision, when you look at it, it's usually green. Do you know why? Uh, because apparently the human eye uh, is... The, the, the human eye is most sensitive for wavelengths of light at around 550-some nanometers, you know, wavelengths. Apparently, that's the color of green. So our eye can discern green in the shades of green a whole lot better than any other color. And so when they sort of put up, uh, you know, the, the differences of, you know, infrared and whatnot and night vision stuff it has to be in green because it can only be one color and green is the best color people can see the differences between you know, a person, a rock, et cetera, et cetera. Well, they're getting closer, my friends, to having full color night vision. Full color night vision. How, you ask? Neural networks, that's right. Uh, they get the sort of deep thinking computers who have been able to sort of look at different uh, shades of night vision and put together a composite picture in real time of what it looks like at dark, but using color night vision. Uh, apparently, uh, I mean, there's still some kinks they gotta work out for looking at. There's some colors that just aren't quite right. But according to the people who are sort of tinkering with this, it looks pretty close. Pretty close. So, uh, I would say sooner than later, we are going to have a full color night vision where, you know, you put on goggles and it'll look like the lights are on, but it will be in the middle of the night. So wouldn't that be interesting? Um, probably super expensive, just like the original night vision goggles, but, uh, yeah. And I would only imagine, you know, it wouldn't surprise me, Howard, now I'm thinking of it, it wouldn't surprise me if, like, the military already has this and, uh, has been using it for years and then we're just starting to get our hands on it. You know, the military has, uh, Velcro that doesn't do the... They have noiseless Velcro. And it's like a national secret. Like, no one knows how they make Velcro that doesn't make that noise. But apparently the government has a way to do it. But they, they've never told anyone how they do it. That's just for them only. So, they might have the night vision goggles that can see color. Maybe. I don't know. Anyways, that's coming soon. I think that's pretty amazing. Computers. Hmm. Crazy stuff. My friends, you don't need night vision for this uh, next show. You just need a connection to AWSM Radio. That's right, The Rock Sessions. It's our drive time show here. Making sure your evening commute homes are fun. Featuring the hottest music on the charts. And some other surprises in between. My friend Rox will make it rock, rock style. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Did I say Thursday? Five days a week, Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., right here, my friends, on AWSM Radio. Next up, my friends, speaking of music, Coachella, the music event of that year. I, I've never been there. It seems like a lot of crowds, a lot of stinky people, and folks that probably wouldn't want to talk to me. But it's a pretty big music event, and apparently The weekend and Swedish House Mafia is replacing Kanye West at this year's Coachella in 2022, April 17th and uh, April 24th, uh, at the Empire Polo Ground in Indio, California. 
Um, Coachella is being held from April 15th to the 17th, and then the 22nd to the 24th. I guess it's two separate weekends. Uh, Billie Eilish and Harry Styles are also heading the event. So Kanye West, former presidential candidate, whose name is now officially Yee, <laughs> uh, has been dropped. He's dropped out of the event. Uh, Travis Scott, who was supposed to join him on stage, will also no longer appear. No report on exactly why he has dropped out, but uh, he has come under fire recently uh, for lashing out at Kim Kardashian and her new boyfriend, Pete Davidson, who continues to, to defy logic, and also Trevor Noah on social media. In fact, West was recently not allowed to come to the Grammys because Trevor Noah was hosting it. Uh, so... So, uh, headliners for Coachella will be Harry Styles on Friday, April 15th and 22nd. Billy Eilish on, Eilish? Eilish on Saturday, April 16th and 23rd. And Swedish House Mafia and The Weekend Sunday, April 17th and April 24th. Be there, Coachella. It, I hear it's great. <laughs> Moving along with science, plastics, they're everywhere, friends. Including lungs. Yep, microplastic fibers. Uh, in a recent study, was found in 11 out of 13 living samples of uh, lungs. And uh, last month, uh, research revealed that microplastics were being found in the human bloodstream. Hooray! So just for definition, uh, microplastics are tiny plastic particles usually sloughed off from erratic fibers. Uh, technically speaking, a microplastic is a piece of plastic debris that's the size of a sesame seed or smaller and uh, usually result of a large plastic piece breaking down. So just remember, plastics do not biodegrade like a paper napkin or a plastic bag or rust like a can, but uh, degrades over time after being smashed and crushed into tiny, 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 tiny bits and pieces. And now microplastics are being found in a, uh, well, just about everything. Lots of things. Um, microplastics... Plastics break off of items, of clothing. Uh, some beauty products have uh, things called microbeads. That's an abrasive agent that sort of cleans up the skin. That is also uh, microplastics. So, yeah, yeah, that's, um, that's not great. So, according to the Huffington Post, uh, there are 8 trillion new plastic microbeads entering the waterways... Every day. Hooray! Things are going great. Things are going great. But, uh... Yeah, that's... That's, uh... That's not great. That's not great. So, hopefully there's some walls in the place to sort of get these microplastics out of the system. But like I said, they're not going away. Because they don't sort of just go away. They kind of just break down further. But now that's something the scientists are trying to keep track of. In music news, Kid Creole, hip-hop pioneer, was convicted this week of a manslaughter. Uh, killed someone in 2017. Uh, he was uh, convicted of a fatal stabbing of a homeless man in New York City. Uh, apparently, he stabbed John Jolly twice in the torso with a steak knife in August 2017. Prosecutors say that the men shared a two-word exchange before Glover, uh, whose real name is Nathaniel, I think Nathaniel Glover, Glover, well, uh, yeah, Nathaniel Glover, uh, approached him and stabbed Jolly, uh, in the torso, uh, Taurus found him, took him to the hospital, but he then later died, Glover ran a couple blocks, apparently, to where he worked at the time, cleaned the knife, changed out the clothes, and then about 50 minutes, he left work, rode a subway, and then uh, threw the knife into a sewer close to the Bronx station. The knife was recovered by the police, and he was arrested the following day. The following day, he is uh, scheduled to be sentenced on May 4th. 
Uh, Glover was part of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, a seminal hip-hop group inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2007. But he is going to jail for manslaughter. Thanks, up, friends. Hurricane season, it's coming. June 1st, it's right around the corner, marking the start of the hurricane season. Although, fun fact, hurricanes can form both uh, before and after hurricane season, which I believe ends, I want to say December 1st or November 1st. Anyways, doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, this year, after active seasons in 20 and 21, forecasters are saying that this will be another above normal year. Uh, according from experts from the Colorado State University and meteorologist, meteorologist Phil Klotzbach, um, they're saying there will be 19 tropical storms in 2022, nine of which will be hurricanes. Uh, on average, there are 14 tropical storms a year, seven of which are hurricanes. If the prediction holds true, it will be the seventh consecutive above normal hurricane season, just so you know. So a tropical storm, for those keeping score at home, uh, are uh, a storm with uh, that rotates around with a sustained wind speed of about 36 miles per hour, while a hurt turns into a hurricane when those wind speeds reach 74 miles per hour. Why 74? I don't know. That's just the number they picked. Of the nine predicted, predicted hurricanes this year, four are expected to become major hurricanes. Category three, four, or five, they are uh, sustained wind speeds of 111 miles per hour or greater. Why 111? Again, don't know. That's just, uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, the group said there's a 71% chance of at least one major hurricane making landfall in the United States. The Atlantic hurricane season, uh, oh, here it is. The Atlantic hurricane season runs from June 1st to November 30th. 30th, I was close. Um, but again, storms do sometimes form out of those dates. Some storms have formed even in May, so uh, a little early, early to the party. So they're expecting that much uh, in terms of hurricanes. They're saying the uh, lack of an El Nino and a warmer-than-normal seawater along the subtropical Atlantic Ocean is fueling, fueling the increased amounts of uh, hurricanes in this season. Uh, El Nino, for those keeping score at home, is the warming of uh, tropical Pacific water, which tends to apparently uh, suppress Atlantic hurricane development. Uh, the opposite of El Nino is La Nina, uh, which is cooler water, which apparently makes Atlantic hurricanes much more likely to happen. Uh, El Nino causes vertical wind shear, which is why well, during El Nino, uh, the wind shear in the Atlantic makes uh, hurricanes um, less likely to develop. So, so there, there you go. There you go. Uh, the university is under the direction of meteorologist William Gray. Um, uh, he was, uh, the, the group was the first, oh, the, the university was under the direction of William Gray, who passed away in 2016. Uh, this group made its first um, uh, hurricane activity forecast in the mid-1980s. And this is their 39th forecast, um, covers the Atlantic Ocean, which includes the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea. Uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Asp Administration, NOAA, will put their predictions out in May uh, for this year. And they're generally pretty close. Generally, there's usually not a huge difference between them. So uh, uh, it is April, friends. So best to be checking your hurricane preparations to make sure you're all ready for this year's hurricane season. Continuing with science, uh, scientists have said they have found an actual part of a dinosaur killed by the asteroid that wiped them out 66 million years ago. Yes, that's right. Uh, they know that um, a lot of these animals were killed by asteroid impact, but they have found a piece of a dinosaur that they believe was killed on the day. 
uh, in North Dakota, of all places. Uh, and the limb is complete with skin. Uh, probably one of the most remarkable finds they have come across um, during this uh, looking for fossils in this part of North, North Dakota. So, um, so just background uh, for those who, you know, science and whatnot. The asteroid in question struck on the Yucatan Peninsula, and this was dinosaur found in North Dakota. So it wasn't blasted all the way from the Yucatan Peninsula. All the stuff that lived there vaporized. But uh, scientists believe that the inner western coastal waterway, which uh, the ocean oceans were higher, so there was a waterway roughly going up the center part of the United States that a uh, basically a tsunami of mud and water raced up over the continent, hit this dinosaur while on the beach, and then buried it the day the asteroid hit the world and wiped out the dinosaurs. So, uh, pretty, pretty amazing. Also, with that leg, um, they found fossils of fish that they, uh, believe rained down from the sky from the impact, which, which was so intense. So intense. Uh, they also came across a piece of fossil turtle, which was skewered by pieces of wood and um, many other things. So they found a lot in this area where they're doing, uh, you know, looking for looking for fossils and whatnot. So they think that this sort of area of fossils um, was uh, found, was, was found, everything, everything buried there. Uh, was buried the day the asteroid hit. In fact, they even came across an egg that they think was shattered by the force of the impact down in the uh, Yucatan Peninsula. So, pretty amazing stuff. So, yeah, yeah, pretty amazing stuff. Uh, so far away, and basically this wave of mud and water went right up the western interior seaway. The Google it. It's a very interesting, very interesting article about that. And wiped out all these animals. Just get them a drink of water. So, but uh, they'll probably research that some more. Probably some more information will come out. But uh, definitely something for you dinosaur uh, fans to take a look at. Uh, saying that this is uh, evidence of dinosaurs that died on the day the asteroid hit in the Yucatan Peninsula. Friends, you don't need to wait 66 million years for a good sports show. It is here today. In fact, Wednesday nights is the place to be because at 9 p.m. it's To the Rack with Mac. Uh, it's your go-to spot for all things basketball. Join NBA expert Mac Daddy as he brings you a full hour of high-flying hoops expertise for all things NBA. Tune in to To the Rack with Mac Wednesdays at 9 p.m. And then right after that, it's What's Going On at 10 p.m. What's Going On is our Fox affiliate show, providing listeners with over 150 combined years of sports knowledge from host Nate Brown and his crew. They are a staple of Western New York sports for the last 20 years, but now they are going national, and we've got them, my friends, right here, Wednesdays at 10 p.m. So for all of your sports needs, it's To The Rack with Mac, Wednesdays at 9 p.m., and What's Going On, Wednesdays at 10 p.m., right here at AWSM Radio. Well, my friends, that has just about wrapped up this week's Saturday Report with me, your favorite redhead, Colt Sebastian Taylor. Thank you for joining me here today. Remember, you can find me on the Twitter, on the Instagram, on the Rizzle, and on the Cameo at Colt S. Taylor. Subscribe to the podcast version of this show at anchor.fm slash Colt S. Taylor. And of course, if you haven't already, you're a fool, but I'm sure you have. Uh, bookmark ColtSebastianTaylor.com for all your Colt Sebastian Taylor needs. It's a uh, it's the place to go. Uh, and of course, like I said, you know, subscribe at anchor.fm slash coltless taylor to get the podcast version of the show. Please do. I really do appreciate it. Uh, just as a programming note, I will not be here next week. It is my birthday next week, and I will be in sunny San Diego uh, enjoying myself. So I will be more than likely seeing you in two weeks, my friends. So please do be good, do be safe, do be careful, and do have a good time. 
Until then, I am, of course, your friend, Colt Sebastian Taylor, and I'll see you later.